Good morning, Dennis Dubacher with Facebook Live on the last Friday of June. It's going to be a hot one. we got a lot of hot weather coming, so plan ahead for that. This is going to be a hot topic, we think, today as well. We've had a lot of opportunity with our Facebook Lives over the past year to discuss a variety of topics, and we've had mostly information passed along to you. You'll get comments to us. Sometimes there's questions. Sometimes it's interactive. It's sometimes not as interactive as we were hoping it was going to be. This one, we believe, is going to be a lot different because we're really going to talk to the person who can really answer the kind of questions that a lot of us have. And if you can share this, you can tell folks about this, and this is the kind of information I think that Lieutenant Michael Shaw from the Michigan State Police will love for you to pass along to new drivers, to drivers who are saying, hey, listen, it's time for me to maybe take a refresher course to make sure that I know what the heck I'm doing because we think we know something and then there becomes like that what is that that uh, myth or that word of mouth say oh no no that's not that that's it that's incorrect so Michael Shaw thank you so much all right it's the law or is it what traffic laws are true and what laws are myths in the state of Michigan so we'll see how you are at answering these questions yourself and then you'll hear it from Lieutenant Michael Shaw as we get into these questions we thought we'd start by the way right here with are these the laws these are the ones we have right here If you crash in bad weather, it's not your fault. So we're making statements, true or false, true or myth. It's okay to travel with your pet in the bed of your pickup truck or a child in the back. When I was younger growing up, we could sit in the back of a pickup truck. Ah, can you do that now? Is it legal or illegal to talk on your phone while driving? Good question. You can tint your windows as dark as you want. I've driven by cars, and I'm sure Mike Dutton Shaw has done the same thing. You can't even see the driver or the passenger in the vehicle. You can text at a stoplight. Interesting question. You should only drive in the right lane unless you are passing. You don't have to stay with your vehicle when you are in a crash. Good question. You should treat traffic lights that are not working as a four-way stop. Get over 1,000 feet before a work zone. And the last one, call WWJ at 248-4236-WWJ before you call police when you see an accident. These were the questions that you sent because these are the most frequently asked by people there's one other one here that we thought you'd want to see do you know the traffic laws in michigan join us as you're joining us right now dennis newbacher with lieutenant michael shaw from the michigan state police this is the one that kind of scares me uh this is the one where passenger feet on the dashboard proof of natural this was a, a comment obviously about bauer san and we're kind of tongue-in-cheek but obviously proof of natural selection illegal or simply a tragical tragically bad idea you see that all the time that's not a good idea it's not a good idea. It's not illegal, uh, but it is. Uh, it's not a good idea, and the reason for that is, is that's where your airbag is. So if you're involved in any type of collision or a crash or something to that, and the airbags deploy, um, that's going to snap both your legs right, right there. The the force of that airbag coming out is going to cause some serious injury to you. So not a good idea. Yeah, thinking, uh, this kind of weather that we have, the windows are rolled down. Everybody wants to do that, and they're relaxing. They're driving along the beach road, maybe through one of the metro parks. And I'll put my feet up on the dashboard. Not, not really a smart move. Not a smart move and especially if you're the driver and we've seen that before too where the driver's driving with the, their right leg and you know they got the left one kind of propped up out of the window and that's not a good idea either you you see all kinds of weird stuff when you when you're working on the roads Boy, that's a laid back way that's a laid back yeah, that's approach laid back. Yeah, absolutely. all right now okay so you can blame the weather if you get oh, oh hey sarah sarah huber all right how are you right. so before we talk about uh this let's continue talking about feet As I'm holding my shoes, yes, I'm barefoot right now. Um, I hear that it's illegal to drive barefoot. Is that right? That is not correct. It is is legal to drive barefoot. So you are good. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. I guess I'm not loud enough. So you can drive barefoot in Michigan. That's a myth that uh, that you're not allowed to. So So you can drive barefoot when you leave. You can work barefoot if you like. I guess that's up to your employer. But that'd be. I don't want to disturb my my coworkers. They don't need that. But okay. So after a long day, I could just kick off my shoes and drive barefoot. No big deal. No big deal. Okay. All right. Back to you, Dennis. Oh. Ski boots, uh, it would be kind of tough in ski boots, I think, to kind of push down there. But, yeah, you got to kind of be careful when you're kind of choosing your footwear because if your foot happens to get stuck or something underneath the pedal and you can't control your car, then you're going to have a problem. All right. Yeah, flip-flops. Flip-flops, you know, is a tough thing to kind of – Because I've heard back and forth about flip-flops just because, like, they could come off or get stuck or – there's nothing in the law that says you can't do it, but it's going to be something that somebody will look at if you're in a crash and you say, oh, I rear-ended them because my flip-flop got stuck. Yeah, we're probably going to we're gonna have a chat. Okay. I'm going to go put my shoes back on. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm sorry. I just had Zara, thank, great question. What a great, great idea. Now, now, Zara, before you run away, now this is the reason I won't 
ride or drive barefoot. There's a think of the movie Castaway. Okay. Remember when Tom Hanks? Oh, this was a fictional movie. Remember when he took his shoes off in the airplane and then he ended up on the beach. He didn't have any shoes on. So I'm just thinking in an accident, just between us, that if I get involved in an accident, I might have to step in glass. I may have to step in metal. I may have to step in gas or oil. So I was thinking as a fatherly figure, which I'm not for you, but as a think, I'm thinking when I'm talking to people, I'm thinking you, you want to, there are people who take off in airplanes from the North country or from the, from Florida. And then they fly to, to Minnesota in the wintertime, but they don't have a jacket on and they crash and they freeze to death. So there are situations like that. So that's why we were talking. I keep them in my trunk though, but wearing stilettos, cause I usually wear stilettos. I don't think that's going to help me at an accident scene. So I keep flats in my trunk, so I'll be okay. Thank you, Dennis. I really appreciate it. I'm, 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 looking, I'm looking out too much for you. That's why I love you. Love you too, Mac. Thanks, Zara. Thanks so much. But that's my, that's my crazy thinking. Yep, and, and that's good thinking, too. We, we see it in the wintertime all the time by the airport, just like you say, where somebody will be broken down in their car, and they're in a, you know, a, a short shirt and, and shorts. And you know, what are you wearing that for? It's like 20 degrees out. Well, I just came from Florida. Well, that's not a good idea. Keep something in your trunk. Keep a, keep a jacket with you. Okay, we have a question or comment from somebody. Okay. We got a comment here from Matt Darby. Is turning into a left turn lane, lane to use it as a merge lane illegal? Yes. If so, why do I never see anyone pulled over for doing it? So, yes, you're only supposed to use a left turn lane to turn left. So that means that if you're going along and you kind of – figure out that you're going to make a left turn, you can enter that lane to make that left turn. Um, it's, you know, we'll see it a lot where people are trying to cross a four-lane highway or a four-lane roadway, and there's a center lane with the left lane turn there, and people get in there and sit. Um, that's illegal as well. And we do stop people for that, and I think some of the locals in the, in the counties do as well. I remember when I was growing up, Grand River was a three-lane highway. You remember, maybe you remember this as well. And I remember the, the middle lane was this passing lane, wasn't it? They don't have many of those roads anymore, I think, because there were too many head-on collisions. People were dying. Collisions, And that's what happens is if you're in the left lane and kind of driving along and somebody's coming the other direction and they're not paying attention or don't expect you to be there, they get in the left lane to make their turn, and now you have a head-on collision. I'm thinking motorcycle accidents occur because... Absolutely, yeah. At, left, at the lights, the lights. People are, people are trying to turn left. They don't see the motorcycle, and they run right into Run right into them. Absolutely. Oh, let's go back to our list, unless we have another comment at all. Do we have an, Okay, let's go back to our list. You can blame the weather if you get in a crash. True or false? For law or myth. <laughs> uh, why? It's a myth. Why? So usually we'll, we'll come up to it, and it'll either be rain or snow. And uh, the first thing that people say is, well, it was snowing out in, in my car. I, I lost control. Well, uh, Mother Nature didn't jump behind the steering wheel. Uh, you are required by Michigan law, the basic speed law, to maintain control of your vehicle at all times. Uh, so this is one of the biggest things that we hear about all the time. Well, it was snowing and I went to the ditch. Well, no, it was snowing, you were going too fast and you drove your car into the ditch. So you would be found at fault in that crash. Just out of curiosity, what do you do personally? What do you teach in the, at the school for the police officers? How far a distance should you be behind the vehicle in front of you when conditions turn into rain, wet, sleet, whatever? What, you do, what do you suggest? What's a good idea? So it's always the rule is, you know, one, one space or one vehicle for every 10 miles. That's what everybody was kind of taught. When you are going in type of bad weather, you want to kind of increase that speed because you want to be able to, if something happens in front of you, you want to be able to brake your vehicle and not have to jam on the brakes. We see it every day during rush hour is when people follow too close to somebody and next thing you see is five or six cars darting onto the shoulder because they don't have enough room to get, stop in front of them. That means you're following too close. So you want to open up that distance and then everybody says well if I open up a distance and somebody's going to get in front of me just yep off. just keep backing off yep it's not NASCAR you know we're going to work we're not in a big rush you know take your time leave that open space for you and you'll be fine sure sounds like everybody's just in a hurry aren't they absolutely. okay so this one you can blame the weather if you get in a crash that is absolutely a myth you cannot do that okay the next one is it's okay to travel with your pet let's just add child in the bed of your pickup truck. There's a nice old Dodge or uh, a Chevrolet pickup truck with a beautiful big uh, dog in the back seat. In the, in, is it? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. George Fox, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, well, it, yeah, all set. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so you, it's okay to travel with a uh, child or, or, or pet in the back of your pickup truck? So uh, we'll go ahead and put it back. So that's a myth. So this is actually illegal. The Michigan law states that you have to have some type of 
protective device around livestock is what it calls it. It doesn't say dog in particular, um, but it has to be livestock. So it has to be a crate, something that protects them if they're involved in a crash or something like that. So you can't just have your animal just in the, throw them in the back of your, your pickup truck and, and go along. And you can't have a child in a cage in the back of your pickup truck either, although we've seen that, haven't we? We have seen that recently, but uh, no, you can't do that either. So you have to be 18 years or older to actually ride in the back of a pickup truck. So in a bed of a pickup truck, 18 and older is fine, 18 and younger you can't do it. Now you've studied this, it seems to me that there's a reason for this happening. Apparently, people have lost their lives or dogs have lost their lives over the years. That's the reason for this, right? Uh, absolutely. There's no seatbelts back here. So there's nothing to hang on to anything as you kind of go along. Um, you will fly out of the back of there. And I think people don't really realize the dynamics of it. If a car is going 70 miles an hour and you're in it and you lose control or whatever and you go either through the windshield or whatever, you're still doing 70 miles an hour until you hit an object. So you're catapulted right at that speed. So what will happen is, is you will run into whatever it is at 70 miles an hour, and the human body isn't built to deal with that. And that's where you see a lot of those internal injuries from people not wearing seatbelts or wearing their seatbelt incorrectly is they'll fly around the, the passenger compartment of the vehicle. That's why we see a lot of injuries more in deaths to backseat passengers because a lot of backseat passengers don't wear their seatbelts and they end up getting killed in that collision. And I'm also thinking that that's probably why we have child seats because they were catapulting those children children right from the back seat, right through the windshield. Right through the windshield, absolutely. Oh, that, that must have been terrible to come upon and see that. Oh, my gosh. Okay, we've got a comment or a question. Marissa Jenkins asks, uh, someone told me when making a Michigan left, there is only one lane, not two, as an outside and an inside lane, so there should never be two cars next to each other in the turnaround. Is that true? Great question, Marissa. Yep. So that is correct. Um, a Michigan left turn, unless it's marked with the actual white lines through there, is one lane. So if you're pulling in there and somebody pulls alongside and hits your car, the one that's uh, actually pulling alongside is at fault in that traffic crash. So you, can't yeah. be, you can't be side by side in a Michigan turn? No, that's one lane. Mm -hmm. Wow, great, que great question. Okay, next question. Let's go to, okay, so this is a myth. You can't do this, and for obvious reasons, too, which is, but some things seem so obvious, though, don't they? Okay, so let's, yeah, there you go. Hit that right there, and then hit the, thank you. You know better. Okay, you can tint your windows as dark as you want. Law or myth? Uh, that's also a myth. Uh, so in Michigan, uh, the window tint law is very specific about what you can do. Uh, here, when you kind of look at the, the passenger and your driver's side window, this can only be four inches of window tint, and that is it. The rest of this all has to be clear. Um, in the it back, light, it can't be a light tint. It's got to be a light tint. It has to be actually clear. So it's only four inches. If we remember in the old days, back in the, the mom and dad's big station wagon, they all had that blue little thing across the top of their windshield. Yeah. That, that four inches kind of goes right over here to the other side. So passenger and driver's side front window can only be four inches across the top, um, straight across, and this has to all be clear. And the back can be tinted, but it has to be 35%. So 35% is, is what it is. Not a lot of law enforcement is really going to make contact with you about that part of it. But the most important part is there, it has to be just dark. It can't be silver. It can't be any other color, things like that. So um, we have to remember that 35% and, and just a dark tint, not anything else. You might be stopped for another reason, maybe speeding on the freeway. And the officer may come up to he or she might say, you know, I'm going to have to also cite you for the, the, the lack of being able to see into your car. And right. that could be cited. Or can you be stopped for this? Oh, absolutely. Window tint it was one of my pet peeves when I worked the road. Um, because most of the time, uh, window tint is because you're doing something in there you're not supposed to be doing. Uh, second of all is I, I can't see. I can't see inside. So already I'm kind of approaching the car. I'm a little worried because I don't know what you're doing inside. Do you have a gun pointed at me? Are you hiding stuff? You know, it, what are you doing inside of that car? So as long as that's clear, then it's you're all set. I can see you. You can see me. We have a happy exchange or uh, maybe not too happy exchange sometimes, and then you're on your way. Okay. Very good. Okay. Got a couple of them here. Tommy Sarcona, uh, actually, let me back up one more. Heather Wilson is following behind a semi to save gas illegal. Oh, interesting question. I mean, are you are you talking about drafting, like a dra like drafting? Yeah. So you have to maintain the proper limit or proper distance behind that car as well. There's nothing that's illegal in there, but you have to understand too. If you're close enough behind there that you're actually drafting that semi driver, that driver can't see you. 
So now you're in their, their blind spot, and it kind of goes along. Plus, if the truck were to happen to hit its brakes, um, if you're drafting that close, uh, you're all done. And usually, most times, when somebody goes underneath a semi-truck, um, it's a fatality. I think that's how uh, Jane Mansfield died years ago, right? The, the great actress. She Her car went right underneath the semi, and I think she got her head chopped off. And I'm sorry to say that, but that's exactly what happened. Okay. No. Okay. Hi, Tommy. Okay, yeah. Good to know. Hi, Tim. Uh, good question. Yes. Uh, as far as the Michigan move over law goes, uh, tow trucks are. Uh, the uh, the um, courtesy vans, also construction vehicles. So Tim asked if, if you could, you know, if, if you see a, some activity on the shoulder, if it's just a tow truck, do you have to move over? And the, the, the law is yes. Is if, there's a, if there's a lights of a tow truck on the shoulder or a tow truck or a police car, emergency vehicles on the shoulder, you have to move over or slow down. And we're talking about significantly slow down. Last time we were on, you said hey, we're talking 15, 20 miles an hour. A lot of people aren't doing that, but slow down, right? Okay, very good. Another comment, another question. Hey, Jennifer. Okay, hanging something from the rear view mirror is illegal. A lot of folks we see with everything, whether it's a graduation tassel or, in, in, or, or the the garter from the wedding or whatever, fuzzy dice. What do you think? Um, so uh, basically the law says, yes, that's illegal. It's uh, obstructed vision. Um, again, that's not something that, you know, most officers are going to really key in on to. Uh, as long as you can see through there, and that's the most important part about it is you want to be able to kind of check out your whole windshield and sometimes people have so much stuff up there um, that they'll go up and, and obstruct their vision and that's what's going to get you stopped it's not going to be the single tree or single tassel um, it's going to be if you got a forest up there or if you got something going on up there that's enough to, that it causes you to obstruct your vision a lot of folks will put their cross from church i think around around that they get in the car and they'll put it around there hopefully it'll protect them right yeah so i'm, I'm not going to mess with anybody's rosary yeah. got it okay another comment or question michelle, hi michelle uh, hi michelle Oh, okay. What can private citizens do when they're texting? Yep. So they can call 911. We, we encourage people to do that. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, naturally, we want you to use a hands-free device if at all is possible just to kind of call 911. But let us know when that's going on, and we'll try to do that. And that includes law enforcement. Uh, I get, as the, the public information officer and also a section commander, I get calls from citizens talking about law enforcement doing the same thing that we're telling people not to do. Uh, we want to know about that, too. Because well, but we think as police officers, you should, you're probably doing some business, but, but you can't do that. The law applies just the same. So um, law enforcement should not be texting as well. Uh, and, and we want to, especially if it's a state trooper, we want to know about it. Okay. Excellent. Excellent question. Let me clear this screen real quick here because we're going to move along and, and try to get something else in here as well. Appreciate all your comments and your questions at all. Let me see. Well, this is the one right here. Well, they clear the ink. Oh, that should do it right there. There we go. Okay. Let's move along to the next one then. You can text at a stoplight. We we're just talking about it. Law or myth? This is the one that I really hate, but uh, yes, you can you can text at a stoplight. The, the texting law is uh, specific to the vehicle actually moving. Um, so you can text at a stoplight. We don't recommend it uh, for the reason that that is, is because what happens when the light turns green, you know, you got the guy in front of you that's, you know, still, or the gal in front of you that's still head down and things like that. So we don't suggest that you do it, but there's nothing in the law that says that you can't text at a stoplight. How about at a, how about, how about at a stop sign or a yield sign? Yep, the vehicle has to be moving. Very good. Keep the comments and questions coming to Lieutenant Michael Shaw from Michigan State Police. We're going to move along now to this one. Why don't we get this cleared here? There we go. There's the waste paper basket, and we'll go to the next one here. You should only drive in the right lane unless you are passing. Okay. Law or myth? So for this one here, uh, address all the hate mail to WWJ because technically it's both. So what the Michigan law actually says is two lanes. Nice handwriting there. Uh, two lanes right there, you actually can go along and that is considered a passing lane with two lanes. If it's three or more, it is not a passing lane. And when we talk about passing lanes, that means that you have to do the speed limit when passing. So if the speed limit is 70, 
and you're passing another car, especially Charlie Langton. How fast can I go? That's yeah. all I want to know. Yeah, How fast you, you're going to yeah. pull me over. Yeah. That's all I want to yeah. know. You know, we make it pretty easy. We put those black and white signs all over the place. Oh, really? If you read that really? sign, it will tell I, you. I yeah. saw you guys out there today. Yeah. Your motorcycles. Yes. You guys, it was yeah. yesterday. You guys were really. Yeah. Yeah, you were pulling people yeah. over. We wow. were taking them, taking them out. Just out of curiosity, that's a very good comment that you just made. I watched the list. What were the stops? How many stops did you make on the lodge yesterday at Wyoming? Just a quick rundown, and what did you stop them for? Yep. So most of it was for speeding. Um, we did make uh, five arrests. Yeah, uh, we made uh, took a fugitive off the street. Had some other ones where people had uh, uh, suspended licenses, things like that. Uh, most of them were for speeding. A couple of no insurance, things like that. So um, we actually were surprised. It wasn't as bad as it usually is. Usually we'll go out there and we'll make some hundred stops easy. Um, people so don't speed. people don't speed. They're learning. Yeah, they're learning. You're and that's and them. that's Isn't what that we're what trying to do? do. That's yes, right. right. Changing it's driver working. behavior. So exactly. I put a stop to that program. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, that that pro program is oh, actually going to continue oh, because uh, hang on Southfield Freeway. I get multiple complaints about the Southfield on our social media sites all the time. Uh, we'll own the Southfield Freeway. The speed limit on the Southfield Freeway is 55. Ooh, you 50, better do it. 55. Yeah. It's going to be a long list of tickets, I think, because of this. Yep. 55. Wow. Yeah. Now, now you've been involved in the law for many, many years, okay? What questions do you get? What quest, what, what's the most asked question that you want to help somebody ar you know, be an arbiter for when it comes to the police or, or when you're in court? Points, yes. We don't want the points. How can I do anything to get the points? Most tickets do have points associated with them. There are a few that don't for the most part. If you're moving a, red, a bad red turn, go through a light, uh, yielding, improperly speeding, those are all have points. And you don't want points on your record because not only do you have a criminal penalty to pay, but you have a penalty to pay with the Secretary of State. And depending on how many points you get, I believe it's 12 right now, you could lose your license. Also... And then the insurance. So you've got the cops, you've got the law, you've got the insurance, and you've got the Secretary of State. All those things, even for one ticket, you've got to be careful on it, depending, of course, on what that ticket is. It could be mandatory licensing. So if you go too fast or do something that's really reckless driving, for example, of course, drunk driving, then you're going to have a whole lot of other problems. So they're very serious, and we make, we make jokes right now. I've known the lieutenant for a long time, but it's very serious, though. I used to handle car accident cases. I represented people who were injured by bad drivers, negligent drivers, going speeding, not paying attention, drunk, and it is serious. And oftentimes, people, not often, many times, their lives, those victims' lives, are devastated forever, many times. And so it's sad. So you've got to obey the speed limit. When you see the sign there, do it, obey it, and you won't have any problems. Okay, very good. Excellent. Thank you, Charlie. Stick around. Do we have something else? Okay, all right. Now, so you should drive in the right lane unless, unless you're passing. Okay. I really want to clear that up. So most of the times you'll go out there in places like 75 up north or on the west side of the state um, where the freeway is actually two lanes. Um, you are required to drive in the rightmost lane and only use the left lane for passing. So as you're going along, you go over there. But in Metro Detroit, we really don't have those lanes or those type of freeways here except for maybe M14 as you're getting close to the Washtenaw border. Um, if it's three lanes or more and you're doing 70 in the left lane, you're correct. So those that are like thinking that they call it the fast lane, the speeding lane, the whatever lane, the, sa the same speed limit is in the left lane of whatever one is marked. And if somebody's doing that, three or more, right, they're perfectly... That's a misconception, isn't it? We were just talking about that. If you're trying to get past somebody that's in the center lane, you want to get around them into the center lane, and you go 80 or 85, you're breaking the law. You're breaking the law, yep. You can only pass the speed limit. You cannot go any faster. So can you write a ticket for someone that's driving under the speed limit? Yes. Now, that's where we kind of get into it right there is when you start talking to people that are in the left lane. So if the speed limit's 70 and they're doing 60, now you're impeding traffic, and you're actually kind of causing a problem. So that's where it kind of goes. But somebody that's actually doing 70... And I knew this is the one that I'll get bombarded on, but um, there is that myth that floats around there that, you know, you have to get over. So though everybody that goes over and flashes their headlights and does all the craziness and, you know, gives the international sign for high and all that stuff, you're actually wrong. Well, the thing is, though, that kind of, to me, kind of gives a heads up. Sometimes that might be somebody who actually is either impaired, maybe having a medical problem, and doesn't realize, and they may have dementia, Alzheimer's, something. They're out there driving. They shouldn't be driving. They're driving tired. That might be an indication that something's going wrong with the driver, right, if they're driving in the left lane at a slow pace. Well, if you kind of look at it, too, if everybody just did the speed limit and kind of were courteous to everybody, we wouldn't have traffic jams. But we under, wouldn't have the issues so under, that we but have. But under your logic, then, everyone would be driving in the right lane, right? Right. 
Yeah. See, there you go. There you we go. wouldn't even need we another lane. We wouldn't even need another lane. See that? Everybody one would be perfect. One lane That's right. <laughs> yep. Save money we on road repairs. We just got the cost of highway <laughs> down right. by a third. Just or two like thirds. All <laughs> done. Yep. Okay, we have a comment or question from uh, one audience member. Yeah. Zach, um, I'll just read it to you. Zach. Zach uh, Hi, Zach. Trent, can, they, can you ever have your music too loud in your car? Ah, good question. Can you ever have your music too loud in your car? Yeah. So music too loud is not a state law, but there are a lot of local ordinances, uh, including the city of Detroit, that has local ordinance that says you can only have your, your music that's only a certain decibel limit. Um, usually what I say is your fun shouldn't override somebody else's. So if you're listening to your music, my Van Halen should not be overdone. The exception, yes. though, is WWJ Radio could have it as loud as you want. Yeah, right. Dennis Newbacher's traffic could be as loud as you want throughout multiple jurisdictions. It doesn't matter. I'll give you that 20 bucks later, Charlie. Thanks so much. But the other thing is, is my dad, this is old-fashioned, but he said, if you can't hear somebody's horn, then your, lo your music is too loud. Is that may seems like common sense to me. It's common sense. You know, it, everybody, somebody wants to show off the new bass that they got in there. You know, if you go by, if your car's shaking, uh, yeah, you probably should turn it down. But really, the worst thing, though, is you can't hear these guys. You can't hear the cops, and you can't hear the fire and an ambulance. So those are the ones, and then when you do hear those, you've got to pull over and let them go. But if you can't hear them, right. that could be a ticket, too. Could be yeah. a ticket. Okay, that's a good, good one to a factor myth. Do you have to pull over when you see an emergency field coming either either direction on the roadway? Is there, is there some way to dispensate between the two? What do you think? So you're supposed to pull over for all emergency vehicles to the right. Now, we'll see everybody that, you know, kind of freaks out a little bit when they see the lights and they don't know what to do and they kind of panic the last second and they'll go to the left, but you're supposed to go to the right. Gotta now, stop. if, um, st and stop. Yeah. stop. Yeah, yes, completely. completely. All right, very good. Okay, a comment. Hi, Diane. Well, that's a great question. If you stay with the speed limit, okay. Because it may be you that gets pulled over. So if that's the case, you know, and when we talk about the, the passing lane and stuff like that, what we're trying to say is what the law says. Now you got to also kind of throw a little common sense into there. If people are doing 80, 85 on the freeway and you're in the left lane doing 70, I would probably move over for your own safety. That's, that kind of makes sense as you kind of go along. But the law says you can stay there. So you'll get some people that, you know, because the law says I can, then they will. But, you know, kind of use common sense with that, too. If everybody's blown by you, you might want to move over just because, you know. You know. And, and the other common principle, two wrongs don't make a right. So there you go. With this 80 over a cliff, you know, you wouldn't go with them. It kind of sounds like I-696 every day, yeah, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, All right. There too shortly. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um, Hi, Tim. What's the best way to inform a trooper that you're legally carrying a concealed weapon? Okay, how do you legally inform a trooper if you're stopped that you are carrying a weapon? Lieutenant Michael Shaw. So the CPL law states that you have to inform law enforcement if you're carrying. Um, I would inform law enforcement if you have a CPL and you're not carrying, because we already know, because it pops up on our computer and things like that. So if they ran your plate or your license uh, beforehand, they're going to already know. And all I want to hear from you is like, hey, I got a CPL. Uh, my gun is in my glove box. My gun is on my hip, whatever it is. And don't show it to me because that's, you know, that could be an issue. We, we could have a problem. Um, just kind of keep it over there and, and be smart about it. And it's called a concealed pistols license for a reason because you're supposed to keep it concealed. So I don't need to see it. I just want to know about it. Okay, excellent. Okay, Charlie, I'm going to hand you the microphone. I'm going to clear this and switch to the next screen. Okay, good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold. All right. All right. Well, I tell you, it's, it's hard. When he writes a ticket, it's hard to challenge it, really. <laughs> Sometimes, though, but we don't want that. Skip the four we don't want that. Is that, that we should find that's that one before. There we go. This is an interesting law. I'm glad you're here. Okay. All right. This is you should treat lights that are not working as four-way oh, stops. Okay. So the law changed. So we, well, well, you can do this thing. Okay. Here's the deal. Okay. Yep. Well, it's, it, now it's a four-way stop, right? So. Okay. Here, this we, go. Is, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> So right now, it's both. It's so both. currently, the, if a traffic light is dark, you're supposed to treat it as a right-of-way rule. Uh, when we first started talking about this, uh, yeah, we call this now, this is the Mike Shaw, Charlie Langton law. Uh, when we started talking about this, probably 90%, including most law enforcement, uh, did not know that that was the actual law. They thought it was 
four-way stop. Four -way stop because the media always tells us it's a four-way stop. So even in the legislature, they didn't know that that's what the law was either. So they kind Cur of the courtesy was the person on the right had the right of way, right? That's kind of how it went around the corner. Yep. But everybody's still treated as a four-way stop. But if you're involved in a traffic crash, you have to go by the law, and the law would say who is actually there. Um, starting uh, at the end of July, July 23rd, uh, the Charlie Langton Mike Shaw law goes into effect, and it will now be actually a four-way stop as you come along. And, and that means even if you're driving along Woodward, whatever, it's three o'clock in the morning, and there's no cars coming, and you come up onto an intersection that has a dark in it, you are required to stop. Okay, Charlie, how did you get involved in this? What were, what were you seeing? What, what, what motivated you to be involved? Because I didn't like that rule. <laughs> I mean, nobody can understand it. So if you're in the left turn lane and there's someone on the right, who goes for it? Nobody. And people, honestly, no offense there, not these listeners, of course, but right or left, north, south, west. And people don't understand that. It's very difficult. And, and who, do I, if I get to the intersection first, I mean, do I have the right of way? It was confusing. So this way, the four-way stop rule is easy. You come to a light, it's broken or not not there, uh, you stop. Then you make your turn. It's easier, simple, and we want the law to be simple and logical, not difficult. So yeah. that was my problem with it. Well, the other, that's good, though. But, but what you do, in essence, basically, is you might save a life in this because people were not, you can, you know, a lot of people are getting crazy in the intersections, and you get in an accident, that causes problems. Somebody's getting injured. This kind of brings it to a stop and say, hey, listen, okay, let's be courteous. Let's wait, four way stop, and then let's go. And let's go. Yep. Great, great work. Great. Thank you, Charlie. Great. Thank you. Thank you for being involved in this so so much. Charlie Langton, what a, what a pleasure. Listen, listen with us all day, of course, on Channel 2, Fox 2. Thanks, Charlie. Have a great weekend. Okay, let's go back here and clear this and go back. I think we go back one here to the, okay. You know, you don't, this, this to me made sense, all the sense in the world. I don't know why I would ever leave a situation, but let's find out if it's the law or is it myth. You don't have to stay with your vehicle where you're going to crash. I'm thinking this is the freeway. This is where you're going to respond. What's the law? This was pretty easy. You have to stay with your vehicle when you're in a crash. Uh, there's some parts of it that people get confused about um, as far as insurance purposes. And I remember a lot of people from you know, back 70s, 80s or so, the insurance companies would tell them, well, don't move your cars no matter what, because we got to get the law enforcement guys out there to look at it. And your insurance companies got to take pictures to determine who's at fault and things like that. Um, Technology is taking us way beyond that. Um, Michigan is a steer it, clear it law. So if you can actually move your vehicle out of the travel lanes and there's no injuries, you're required to do so. Then you're required to stay in your car and make contact either with the other driver or to contact law enforcement to come out and take a report. If there's more than $1,000 worth of damage to your car, you are required by law to contact law enforcement to make a report. Now, we also know that... How do you judge that, How do you judge that right? Well, <laughs> Nowadays, if even a little dent is $1,000, right? Probably a grand, right? So, you know, it's better safe than sorry. Sometimes it is to, to kind of go through there. And I, we also realize that somebody... Uh, may make a deal with the other driver, hey, you know, I'll cover your deductible, we'll take care of this out of pocket. And that's all fine if you agree on that. But realize that you can't come back afterwards and, you know, three to four months down the road when the person that supposedly was helpful to you uh, decides that they're not going to pay you or not do what they had promised to do, you can't come back four, four months later down to the police and say, hey, you know, this happened four months ago, this guy's not going to help me, you're going to be out of luck. So you're better off to to kind of contact law enforcement. Have and preferably, too, you said steer it and clear it. Sure. If you can, if, if the vehicles are on the left shoulder and they were drivable, you're going to get them to the right shoulder. Right. But you're suggesting that if the accident occurs in the freeway, on the freeway, get it to the right shoulder. Right. Get to the right shoulder. And if you want to get off the freeway, when you got, both drive off the freeway, um, contact law enforcement. Let them know, hey, we're involved in a crash on 696. Uh, we felt unsafe, and we pulled off into the gas station at the corner of Coolidge. Um, can you send a, a trooper out here, and we'll come out there and do it. Okay, now, while I'm thinking about that, let's just drop this in right now, because we're looking at the freeway. You're stopped here. Let's say you're getting pulled over. You're on the freeway. We've heard about all the stories about unmarked cars. People aren't police cars. You know, they're not police officers. What if I decided to leave the freeway because I was concerned about being stopped? It's overnight. I'm worried about it. So I get off, let's say, get off of the 275 and get on 7 Mile there. Is that okay to do? Is, am I going to be penalized for doing that, for not stopping right away on the right shoulder? What is your take on this? So for us, uh, MSP-wise, uh, we don't do 
patrol operations in unmarked cars. So all of our cars are the distinctive blue, except for we have a couple of semi-marked cars um, that actually just have the shield on the passenger side and not on the driver's side. That's the only difference that we have. If for some reason that you're going behind you and you see somebody and things aren't right, you know, turn on your hazards. Uh, don't take off. You know, keep a slow speed. Start to work your way over to, to one lane and call 911. Say, hey, I, I'm getting pulled over at this location, and away we go. And and you know, we, I want to know if this guy's real or not. And if it's not, you, you will get some real guys there pretty shortly. Okay. But in the meantime, it's all right to slow down and move that direction. Okay. All right. Let's get this cleared right here and go to the next one. We get to talking here, and we don't want to stop, I guess. Law or myth, in a work zone, you have to get over 1,000 feet before you reach the work zone, so basically three football lengths. That's a long way. That's a myth. So usually what will happen when you come up onto a construction zone, you'll get everybody that kind of gets over really early, um, and they don't use the lanes of travel that you can actually use as you go along. So um, as you're kind of moving along, moving along, moving along, everybody crams into one lane with this other lane that's open, and then everybody gets mad when that person kind of goes along that lane. Um, that person is actually correct. If everybody were to stay in their lanes and kind of zipper merge when they got to the construction barrels, traffic would smoothly go through that construction area. There'd be no traffic jams. Okay, let's go to our next question here. And uh, in fact, why don't I do this real quick? Clear this. All right, move along to the. I think that's our last one. No, it's not our last one. But when you see an accident, you should. Yes, this is our last one. When you see an accident, you should grab your phones, take pictures, and call WWJ first before you call the police. Uh, that is a, that's a huge, huge myth. Uh, Double circle. <laughs> um, we find that now, especially with social media, quite often uh, people want to be uh, on the street reporters. Uh, so they're more apt to put on their cell phone or take pictures or call uh, the media and things like that before they even contact law enforcement. Um, I don't care if you take pictures. I don't care if, you know, you want to be a traffic tipster or, you know, a, a Channel 4 or whatever, or, you know, whatever you're going to do, that's fine. Just make sure you call us first because we're the ones that got to get out there, clear the freeway, take care of the injured, do things like that, and then you can, you know, move on and, and give you guys a call. That was our last question, and we had one more comment we wanted to ask about. If you're stopped, how should you position yourself in the car when the police car is walking, when he or she is coming up to your window? How should you be positioned? What should you say? What should you not say? So basically, you should just sit still, and uh, the law enforcement officer is going to make contact with you and ask you to do certain things. Leave your seatbelt on. Keep your hands where you can see them, because this is what my biggest concern is, is I'm law enforcement. I go up there, because this is what's going to cause me harm or kill me, is these hands. So as long as I can see your hands and I walk up to the car, and I'm going to ask you, hey, I'm, I'm Lieutenant Shaw. Um, from the Michigan State Police, the reason I stopped you today is, you know, you're doing 80 and a 70. Uh, can I see your driver's license, registration, insurance? And that's when you go over there and you get it. Um, if you have a CPL, the first thing out of your mouth is, as soon as I walk up there is, I have a gun on me. This is where it's at. And then just kind of go through the process and, you know, we'll be as courteous to you as you are to us. And hopefully, you know, you don't get a ticket and you get a verbal warning. You're in. And as a driver, you would suggest your passengers to do the same thing, I'm assuming, right? Absolutely. Usually the biggest problem that we have is not the driver itself. It's all the uh, the backseat lawyers and the, uh, you know, the passenger side judges on the other side that, you know, know the law better than anybody else in the world and gets the driver a ticket uh, because they just couldn't keep their mouth shut. Lieutenant Michael Shaw, thank you so much. You come in on a regular basis to talk with us. Thank you. Stay safe. We appreciate it. Thank him for our, the work that they do. Thank you for looking in. Share this. Comments and questions continue to bring them in. But you now have a lot of answers to questions that we've all had and many more as well. Thank you for looking on a Facebook Live last Friday in June. Have a great day. Stay cool this coming weekend. Watch out for your pets, elderly friends, and folks uh, next door. And uh, be careful, okay? Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Yeah, good idea.